All right, good morning, peoples. I'm back at it to give you GDXY. So we had a great earnings report, but the market didn't seem to love it, and the metals kind of sold off and got beat up. But again, I'm not surprised in this climate. Um, I got a little more detail to share with you, but let's just get in the stat. So uh, again, we got capped when we did run. Now we're selling off. The good news is we're going to win our weeklies. So no trades. We're still at the same 1,325,000. Um, so we, let's look at 1880. I rounded it. It was like 795. So we were down 0.42. And GDX, our underlying, was down 0.59. So we're still over our strike price. So if we get volume in and we muddle around here, I'm not optimistic the rest of this week, but I'll just have to see what else gets played out um, to give you a better short-term indication. Again, I... I couldn't be more bullish in the metals. And why don't I jump over and show you one thing that I that I put in here today. So this has to do with Newmont. Okay, cost inflation continues among the major gold producers, the world's largest. So it kind of validates I thought Newmont was, but I didn't have this stat. Just reported all in sustaining cost of one thousand five hundred and sixty two dollars per ounce for the second quarter this is a typo it should be 2024 right we're not talking about 2014 not when we're showing quarter two 24. a new all-time high for asic all-in sustaining cost we don't want higher numbers for aisc so what does that say that says between labor and fuel, those are the two biggest costs for a mining operation of any kind, right? You have equipment, but you expect to have equipment and maintenance, but your big drivers are the fuel, the energy. Most of the time, it's diesel, right? But diesel is similar to gas and things and, and has to be um, uh, processed. Okay. Newmont was once again bailed out by higher gold prices. Free cash flow and net income numbers beat expectations. Well, they blew out expectations. Look at this gap. But you had a situation where if you look at it, you have rising prices. All you have to do is look at your insurance bill, look at property. You know, no matter what you look at, it costs more today. This idea that they're getting close to a 2% inflation. Yeah, I, I think what happens is people are out of money and they're putting it on their credit cards and stuff. But a lot of people fall into that category. Just go out and try to buy something at fiat currency. It doesn't go anywhere, right? That's why ultimately things like mining, people just stop mining. Right. I mean, it's not like gold is consumed the way silver is or copper or some other metals, but it has inflationary things for it. Gold's always been a store of value. You're seeing a lot of the BRICS nations wanting to back their currency with a portion of gold and other commodities. And sadly, that drains from these dollar reserve status that we've enjoyed in the U.S. as a nation for many, many years. So that's your real issue at play here. And so what's the solution to that? Well, people don't mine unless they can make a good profit. So if my labor and and my equipment and my fuel costs go up, then I stop mining unless the price. So I can tell you right now, the price of silver. And whether, can I tell you next week or two weeks or the third Friday in December? No. But silver will have a massive, you know, recreation of its price. It just simply has to. Miners won't mine the metal and bring it to the market unless prices go up. So 
that's a situation. Whereas an insurance company is saying we have record profits. What? Because they're an automobile insurance or their property insurance, right? Home fire, whatever, you know, disaster. Those guys don't have as many costs. I get it if you have natural disasters can drive up their costs. But this is just simply, it's foreseen. Gold is more of a monetary metal, so it tends to move from a fear factor, a war factor, a lot of other things, not just inflation. The real cost of money, the difference on what money is priced at and what real inflation is. So if you figure it's at least somewhere 8 10% kind of inflation that we live with today. Nowhere near what they're telling you, two or three percent. So anyway, back to this. I just, you know, I saw this and I I wanted to uh, um, give you a little update on that. So let's go look at our weekly. So we look great, right? We got two trading days. We're at 37.23. We'll capture those. But I really want us to start winning on the synthetic. If you can win on the synthetic and win on your weekly, that's a killer. So you just got to move up slowly. So let's see, is this muted for a week or two in the middle? I don't know. A lot of times when the market goes down and you have margin calls and that kind of stuff, remember, what are miners? They're stocks first. They're commodities second. So if the market's going to pull back, they get beat up oftentimes with that. But what's one of the first things to recover in a recessionary environment? You still need a certain amount of things, right? You need energy. You don't want the grid to go down. You you don't want to freeze to death or, or get heat stroke. So there's just certain necessary things. And the commodity metals, other than gold, are necessary. But you know who's buying all the gold now? It's all the Eastern. It's India. It's China. It's all the the BRICS countries. Brazil, they're all buying up gold. These central banks have been buying it like crazy. Okay. So let's look at holdings and see. So as we move down some, our synthetic dropped. Not massively. We still have a gain there, right? We had 342, 476, 541, and now we're we're to 389. So fair value, we're showing, we closed at 1888, maybe 11 cents above fair value at 1877. Um, And look at our capture. We're now at 72.09%, right? This is the following week. I didn't add this one in. So we could buy it back for 47. Well, guess what? As long as we stay below 38 with two trading days, this will probably drop to four cents tomorrow. And then on Friday, they can buy it back for a penny. Um, So that's what I got on that, guys. Let's jump over. It's a long morning already getting all these videos in the evening before getting this stuff out. So this is my last one. Uh, Let's go look at the payout tab. Well, we don't have a lot of cash. That comes down to it. This 389, based on our share count, says that we've got about 29 cents, right? We've we've got a loss of 22. So we got to write some more weeklies two more times, and we got to win on our synthetic a little bit to have some money. I figure this could be a low pay. This could be a 40 or 50, per, you know, 50 cent, 40 cent payout, which is still a relatively decent yield. But I didn't get into GDX in the long run for that reason. Like I said, I make a lot more playing the miners when they're going to run. And I don't see the run right at the moment, right? So I'll let you know when I think the run is coming again. And really, at any point in time, a lot of it has to do with the geopolitical and and war cycles and other kinds of things as we move into this election. Okay, guys, that's what I got for you. So nothing great, nothing bad, just kind of muddling along for now. It's a lot better than what happened to a lot of the tech stuff. They really got destroyed. Okay, guys, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Have a great day ahead. Bye for now.